Aprende inglés paso a paso. Lección 35. Nivel avanzado. Paso 1. Gramática 1. We're looking at mixed conditionals here. Past and present. Present and past. Ejercicios a traducir. Si tuviera más experiencia, habría conseguido el trabajo. If I had more experience, I would have got the job. Great. Si hablara inglés fluidamente, me habrían ascendido el año pasado. If I spoke fluent English, I would have been promoted last year. Fantastic. If I spoke fluent English, I would have been promoted last year. Si mi coche fuese un 4x4, no se habría atascado en el bar. If my car were a 4x4, four four, it wouldn't have got stuck in the mud. Fantastic, a 4x4. Four four. Good. Si el clima fuese bueno en Inglaterra, no habría venido a vivir a España. If the weather were good in England, I wouldn't have come to live in Spain. Great. Si los cigarros no fuesen tan caros, no habría dejado de fumar. If cigarettes weren't so expensive, I wouldn't have given up smoking. Fantastic, Alberto. If cigarettes weren't so expensive, I wouldn't have given up smoking. Next one. Si tuviera más tiempo libre, habría ido a la boda. If I had more free time, I would have gone to the wedding. Great. Habría saltado si tuvieras 20 años menos. Would you have jumped if you were 20 years younger? Would you have jumped if you were 20 years younger? Good work. Ok, ahora yo leo la frase en inglés y tú en castellano. Vamos. Si hubiese nacido en Polonia, hablaría polaco fluidamente. If I had been born in Poland, I would speak fluent Polish. Si hubieses limpiado tus zapatos con abrillantador anoche, tendrías un aspecto más formal. If you had cleaned your shoes with polished last night, you would look more formal. Yo no fumaría si me hubiesen operado hace un mes. I wouldn't smoke if I had been operated on a month ago. Intentaría mantener la calma si me hubiese picado una serpiente. I would try to stay calm if I had been bitten by a snake. Good advice. Si Napoleón no hubiese escapado de la isla de Elba, el duque de Wellington no sería tan famoso hoy en día. If Napoleon hadn't escaped from the Isle of Elba, the Duke of Wellington wouldn't be so famous nowadays. Good history lesson. Si mi ex jefe no hubiese entrado en la empresa, yo no sería el director general Hoy. If my ex boss hadn't joined the company, I wouldn't be managing director today. No tendrías tanto frío ahora mismo si me hubieses hecho caso y te hubieras traído un abrigo. You wouldn't be so cold right now if you'd listened to me and brought a coat. Great work, Alberto. See you in the next paso. Paso dos. Exprésate como un nativo. To make a mess of something, nuestra expresión de hoy significa hacer algo muy mal. Ejercicios a traducir. Te has ensuciado el pantalón de nuevo. You've made a right mess of your new trousers. Good, one more time. You've made a right mess of your new trousers. Good, you've made a right mess of your new trousers. Me está saliendo muy mal esta receta. I'm making a right mess of this recipe. Great, estropearon por completo su matrimonio. They made a right mess of their marriage. Good, ella ha arruinado su vida por completo. She's made a complete mess of her life. Oh no. She's made a complete mess of her life. Qué ejemplo, ¿no? <laughs> ¿Por qué siempre haces las cosas mal? Why do you always make a mess of things? Good. Si no ensayas, te saldrá mal el discurso. If you don't rehearse, you'll make a mess of your speech. Fantastic. Estoy preocupado porque me vaya a salir mal este informe. I'm worried of I'm going to make a mess of this, of this report. Good. One more time. I'm worried I'm going to make a mess of this report. Fantastic. Más ejemplos ahora con mix Conditionals. Si no hubieses hecho tan mal el discurso de ventas, quizá tendríamos el contrato ya. If you hadn't made such a mess of this of the sales pitch, maybe we'd have the contract by now. Good, by now. good. If you hadn't made such a mess of the sales pitch, maybe we'd have the contract by now. Si Johnson no hubiera llevado tan mal el caso, esa escoria estaría en re, entre rejas. A ver si me sale ahora mismo. Good. If Johnson hadn't made such a mess of the case, that scum would be behind bars right now. Fantastic and great pronunciation, Alberto. Si Mike no hubiera hecho las cosas tan mal, Grace no le habría dejado. If Mike hadn't made such a mess of things, Grace wouldn't have left him. Fantastic, okay? If Mike hadn't made such a mess of things, Grace wouldn't have left him. Si no hubiese hecho tan mal la sopa, esta comida sería perfecta. If I hadn't made such a mess of the soup, this meal would be perfect. Great, three more. ¿Cómo puedes hacer tan mal una simple ensalada? How can you make such a mess of a simple salad? Good. 
Robert, how can you make such a mess of a simple salad? Lo que me dice mi novia. <laughs> ¿Cómo puede alguien hacer una sencilla tarea tan mal? How can someone make such a mess of such a simple task? Fantastic. Okay, last one. ¿Cómo puede haber hecho Julie tan mal su presentación? How could Julie have made such a mess of her presentation? How could Julie have made such a mess of her presentation? Fantastic work, Alberto. Paso tres. Pronunciación. Ok, uh, circunstancias en inglés es... Circumstances. Fantastic. Circumstances. Ejercicios a traducir. Teniendo en cuenta las circunstancias, creo que deberíamos esperar un poco más. Given the circumstances, I think we should wait a little, a little longer. Good. Given the circumstances, I think we should wait a little longer. Ella está bien dentro de lo que cabe. She is fine, given the circumstance, circumstances. Good. One more time. She is fine, given the circumstances. Good. Dentro de lo que cabe, given the circumstances. Circumstances. She's fine given the circumstances. Bajo ningún concepto deberías hablar con ellos. Under no circumstances you should speak to them. One more time. Oh. Under no circumstances should you speak to them. Good. Should you. Under no, under no circumstances should you speak to them. Con should antes de you. One more time. Under no circumstances should you speak to them. Fantastic. Yo diría que estamos haciendo un trabajo fantástico teniendo en cuenta las circunstancias. I'd say you were doing a fantastic job given the circumstances. Great. I would say so too. I'd say we're doing a fantastic job given the circumstances as well. <laughs> Next one. Él cree que esta es la única solución viable teniendo en cuenta las circunstancias actuales. He believes that this is the only viable solution given the current circumstances. Fantastic. Alberto, bajo ningún concepto deberían tardar más de siete días en preparar cada caso. Under no circumstances should they spend more than seven days preparing each case. Excellent. Bajo ningún concepto deberían intervenir under no circumstances should they interfere. Under no circumstances should they interfere. More examples now with more mixed conditionals. Él estaría aquí ahora si las circunstancias hubieran sido diferentes. He'd be here by now if the circumstances had been different. Great. Serían campeones si las circunstancias del entrenador hubieran sido diferentes. They'd be champions if the coach's circumstances had been different. Good. They'd be champions if the coach's circumstances had been different. Ella seguiría trabajando con nosotros ahora si las circunstancias hubieran sido distintas. She'd still be working with us now if the circumstances had been different. She'd still be working with us now if the circumstances had been different. Good. Aún estarían juntos ahora si las circunstancias no hubieran cambiado. They'd still be together now if the circumstances hadn't changed. Fantastic and great pronunciation. Si las circunstancias no hubiesen cambiado, ahora estaríamos en un gran lío. If the circumstances hadn't changed, we'd be in deep, deep trouble now. Good. If the circumstances hadn't changed, we'd be in deep trouble now. Last one. Seguirían viviendo en aquel vecindario si las circunstancias no hubieran cambiado de forma tan drástica. They'd still be living in that neighborhood if the circumstances hadn't changed so drastically. You got it, Alberto. Great pronunciation of circumstances. Paso cuatro. Phrasal verb. Oh. Good. To walk out on, que puede significar o abandonar o dejar, ¿no? Mm -hmm. Salir caminando. Ejercicios a traducir. Okay, first example. Es increíble. Después de menos de un mes casados, ella abandonó a su marido. Oh, no. It's unbelievable. After less than one month of marriage, she walked out on her husband. Very bad. Very bad. After less than one month of marriage, she walked out on her husband. Es devastador. Él la dejó justo antes de que se fueran a casar. It's devastating. He walked out on her just before they were about to get married. It's devastating. Yes, all devastating examples so far. He walked out on her just before they were about about to get married. Es tan triste. Él no dio ninguna razón. Simplemente la dejó un día sin previo aviso. It's so sad. He gave no reasons. He just walked out on her one day without warning. Qué tragedia. What a tragedy. No, a tragic yeah. momento. Okay. <laughs> he walked out on her. Okay. Lo pensaría dos veces antes de que hagas algo tan drástico como abandonarles. I would think twice before you do something as drastic as walking out on them. Good. I would think twice before you do something as drastic as walking out on them. Es alucinante. Ella le 
dejó y nunca volvió. It's mind blowing. She walked out on him and never came back. Good. She walked out on him and never came back. Más tragedias, ¿ok? <laughs> Tuvo algún tipo de crisis de la mediana edad y abandonó a su marido y a sus hijos. She had some sort of midlife crisis and walked out on her husband and children. Good. She had some sort of midlife crisis and walked out on her husband and children. Más ejemplos. Ahora, cuando to walk out on significa dejar, ¿ok? Tú en castellano y yo en inglés esta vez. Ok. Jack tomó la decisión en ese mismo momento y dejó su trabajo. Jack made the decision then and there and walked out on his job. No dejes su trabajo hasta que no hayas encontrado otro. Don't walk out on your job until you found another one. Cuando se negaron a subirle el sueldo, él dimitió. When they refused to raise his salary, he walked out on his job. Si no empiezan a subir los sueldos, más personas dimitirán. If they don't start raising the salaries, more people will walk out on their job. Todos los trabajadores abandonaron su trabajo cuando oyeron hablar de los recortes salariales. The workers all walked out on their job when they heard about the pay cuts. Last example. Voy a abandonar mi trabajo si no me dan el ascenso que estoy esperando. I'm going to walk out on my job if I don't get the promotion I'm hoping for. Great work, Alberto. See you in the next paso. Paso 5. Vocabulario. Voc formas de describir lugares. Ejercicios a traducir. It's me in English. Let's go. Si esta casa no tuviera tantas corrientes de aire, ya la habríamos vendido. If this house weren't so drafty, we would have sold it by now. No estarías enferma ahora si no hubieras estado viviendo en condiciones tan sucias. You wouldn't be ill now if you hadn't been living in such squalid conditions. Si este sitio no fuera una pocilga, quizá lo habrías alquilado ya. If this place weren't such a pigsty, perhaps you would have rented it already. Si este lugar hubiera estado amueblado, no habríamos gastado tanto dinero amueblándolo. If this place had been furnished, we wouldn't have spent so much money furnishing it. Si el edificio de oficinas no hubiera estado húmedo y sin amueblar, ellos no se habrían negado a comprarlo. If the office building hadn't been damp and unfurnished, they wouldn't have refused to buy it. Aún estaría viviendo en Nueva York ahora si los apartamentos allí no hubieran sido tan estrechos. I'd still be living in New York City now if the apartments there hadn't been so cramped. No estaría tan deprimida ahora si no hubiera pasado tanto tiempo viviendo en un apartamento en ruinas. I wouldn't be so depressed now if I had hadn't spent so long living in a run-down flat. Okay, more examples. Ahora tú en inglés y yo en castellano. Este sitio es una posilga. This place is such a pigsty. Fantastic. Estas paredes están tan húmedas. These walls are so damp. Great. Estoy descartando propiedades sin amueblar porque cuesta mucho dinero amueblarlas. I'm ruling out unfurnished properties because it costs so much money to furnish them. Excellent. Este piso es muy estrecho, pero por lo menos está amueblado. This flat so cramped, but at least it's furnished. Great. No se puede esperar que vivas en condiciones tan sucias. You can't be expected to live in such squalid conditions. Two more. Esta oficina tiene muchas corrientes de aire. Hay que hacer algo al respeto. This office is so drafty. Something has to be done about it. And the last one. Jamás he estado en un vecindario tan abandonado. I've never been in such a run-down neighborhood. Great. I've never been in such a run-down neighborhood. Vaya ejemplos más negativos. See you in the next paso. Paso 6. Gramática 2. Ok, grammar to get and to manage, conseguir. Ok, let's look at the examples. Ejercicios a traducir. Él consiguió las últimas dos entradas que quedaban. He got the last two tickets that were left. Fantastic. Consigue los últimos éxitos en este fantástico disco recopilatorio. Get the latest hits on this great compilation album. Great. Ella consiguió la muestra que buscaba. She got the sample that she was after. Great. She got the sample that she was after. Al final consiguieron una, un grandísimo descuento. They got a massive discount in the end. Fantastic. Ella consiguió lo que pedía. Did she get what she asked for? Good. Did she get what she asked for? Perfect. Consiguieron lo que querían. Did they get what they wanted? Great. Did they get what they wanted? Consiguieron los libros que buscaban. Did they get the books they were after? Fantastic. Ahora tú en castellano y yo en inglés. Con to manage. Conseguir. A pesar del coste del transporte, ella consigue ver a sus padres una vez cada 15 días. Despite the cost of transport, she manages to see her parents once a fortnight. Fue difícil pero conseguimos hablar con la persona responsable del proyecto. It was difficult, but we managed to talk to the person in charge of the project. A pesar de la lluvia, conseguí volver a casa en coche. Despite the rain, I managed to drive home. ¿Encontraron por fin un piso en esa zona? Did they manage to find a new flat in that area? ¿Te las arreglaste para hablar con los abogados? Did you manage to speak to the lawyers? ¿Terminaste la contabilidad la semana pasada? Did you manage to finish the accounts last week? Last example, let's go. ¿Conseguiste reparar tu reloj al final? Did you manage to repair your watch in the end? You 
manage the work, Alberto. You got it. See you in a minute. Paso siete. Verbos regulares. Ok, regular verb time. Para elegir o recolectar. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés, Alberto? Uh, pick. Good, to pick. Comprobar o averiguar. Check. To check. Good. Y esperar o desear. To wish. Good, to wish. Ejercicios a traducir. Cada año recolectan moras. Every year they pick blackberries. Fantastic. El año pasado recolectaron moras. Last year they picked blackberries. Great. Esta tarde han recolectado moras. This afternoon they've, they've picked blackberries. Fantastic. Siempre compruebo los informes. I always check the reports. Great. Comprobé el informe hace un rato. I checked the report earlier. Acabamos de comprobar el informe. We've just checked the report. Great. Deseame suerte. Wish me luck. Wish me luck. Good. Ella te deseó suerte, suerte cuando la vi. She wished you luck when I saw her. Good. She wished you luck when I saw her. Él ha deseado un cambio toda su vida. He's wished for a change all his life. He's wished for a change all his life. Más ejemplos ahora con la gramática más complicada. Antes echamos un vistazo al restaurante. Parece genial. We checked out the restaurant earlier. It looks great. Good. We checked out the restaurant earlier. It looks great. En cuanto llegué, deseé no haber ido. El lugar era horrible y la gente aún peor. As soon as I arrived, I wished I'd never gone. The place was horrible and the people were even worse. Fantastic. Si hubieras elegido la opción A, habrías ganado cinco mil dólares. If you, if you picked option A, you'd have won five thousand dollars. Qué pena. If you had picked option A, you would have won $5,000, but sadly you didn't, Alberto. I'm sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Next example. ¿Cómo que todavía no has comprobado los errores? Este informe debe entregarse antes de las seis. What do you mean you haven't checked for mistakes yet? This report is due by six. Good. This report is due by six. Great. ¿Cómo que no les has recogido aún? Llevan más de media hora esperando. What do you mean you haven't picked them up yet? They've been waiting for over half an hour. Great. They've been waiting for over half an hour. Me deseo toda la suerte del mundo. Y se fue con una lágrima en el ojo. She wished me all the best and left with a tear in her eye. Fantastic. Al principio deseé que no me hubieran elegido, pero cuando eché un vistazo al plan, cambié de opinión. At first, I wished they hadn't picked me, but when they checked it, when I checked out the plan, I changed my mind. One more time. At first, I wished they hadn't picked me, but when I checked out the plan, I changed my mind. Fantastic work, Alberto. Paso 8. Comprensión auditiva. Oh. Ejercicios. Alberto, listen to the following story very carefully, and then I'm going to ask you five questions about it. Okay. Good. This one is from the perspective of Timothy. <clears throat> I've never understood why they've never changed the printer. As soon as you want to print out more than 10 pages at the same time, the blinking thing jams. It's infuriating. Plus, it gets through ink cartridges like nobody's business. I truly believe that the cost of all the employee time wasted getting it to work properly would easily cover the cost of buying a new one. I think it's time to ask the purchasing department to buy a new one. Okay. Question time. What's Timothy never understood, Alberto? He's never understood why they've never changed the printer. Fantastic. He's never understood why. Okay. What happens to the printer every time you want to print out more than 10 pages at a time? In Timothy's words, the blinking thing jams. Good. The blinking thing jams. Okay. Great. How quickly does the printer get through ink cartridges? It gets through ink cartridges like nobody's business. Good. Like nobody's business. Okay. What does Timpani Timothy truly believe? He truly believes that the cost of all the employee time wasted getting in getting it to work properly would easily cover the cost of buying a new one. Yeah, exactly. They could buy a new one and it would cost the same as in terms of how much time they waste trying to get it to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last question. What does he think it's time to do? He thinks it's time to ask the purchasing department to buy a new one. Fantastic. Great work, Alberto. Paso nueve. Error común. Oh, la primera vez que lo hacemos. This is the first time we've done it. Good. This is the first time we've done it. En presente perfecto. Ejercicios. Esta es la primera vez que traduzco una frase. This is the first time I've ever translated a sentence. Fantastic. Esta es la primera vez que comemos berberechos. This is the first time we've ever eaten cockles. Fantastic. Pero es la segunda vez que pedimos marisco. But it's the second time we've ordered shellfish. Good. But it's the second time we've ordered shellfish con la SH. Good. Voy a Grecia la próxima semana. Será la primera vez que viaje en barco en mi vida. I'm going to Greece next week. It'll be the first time I've traveled by boat in my life. Great. 
great work, Alberto, pero será la tercera vez que viaje al extranjero. But it'll be the third time I've traveled abroad. Good, but it'll be the third time I've traveled abroad. Okay? Esta es la enésima vez que los vecinos nos despiertan. This is the umpteenth time the neighbors have woken us up. This is the umpteenth time the neighbors have woken us up. Great work. Pero es la primera vez que llamamos a la policía. But it's the first time we've called the police. Good, but it's the first time we've called the police. Okay, more examples. You in Spanish, me in English. Esa era la cuarta vez que él intentaba contactar con ella. That was the fourth time he had tried to contact her. Pero fue la segunda vez que intentaba contactar con ella esa semana. But it was the second time he had tried to contact her that week. Era la octava vez que le ingresaban en el hospital. It was the eighth time he'd been admitted to the hospital. Pero solo era la segunda vez que le ingresaban en el hospital aquel año. But it was only the second time he'd been admitted to the hospital that year. Era la primera vez que oía hablar del puenting. It was the first time I'd ever heard of bungee jumping. Era la primera vez que ella se topaba con ese término. It was the first time she'd ever come across this term. Era la primera vez que veíamos un ornitorrinco. It was the first time we'd ever seen a platypus. Good job, Alberto. See you in the next Paso el Resumen. Paso 10. El repaso. Si hablara inglés fluidamente, me habrían ascendido el año pasado. If I spoke fluent English, I would have been promoted last year. Excellent. Si el clima fuese bueno en Inglaterra, no habría venido a vivir a España. If the weather were good in England, I wouldn't have come to live in Spain. Perfect. Yo no fumaría si me hubiesen operado hace un mes. I wouldn't smoke if I had been operated on a month ago. Great. No tendrías tanto frío ahora mismo si me hubieras hecho caso y te hubieras traído un abrigo. You wouldn't be so cold right now if you'd listen to me and brought a coat. Fantastic, Alberto. Estropearon por completo su matrimonio. They made a right mess of the way of their marriage. Good. They made a right mess of their marriage. Su matrimonio. Si Johnson no hubiera llevado tan mal el caso, esa escoria estaría entre rejas ahora mismo. If Johnson hadn't made such a mess of the case, that scum would be behind bars right now. Great, great pronunciation, Alberto. ¿Cómo puede haber hecho Julie tan mal su presentación? How could Julie have made such a mess of her presentation. Good. How could Julie have made such a mess of her presentation? Teniendo en cuenta las circunstancias, creo que deberíamos esperar un poco más. Given the circumstances, I think we should wait a little longer. Good. Given the circumstances, I think we should wait a little longer. Circumstances. Bajo ningún concepto deberías hablar con ellos. Under no circumstances Good. should you speak to them. Under no circumstances should you speak to them. Él estaría aquí ahora si las circunstancias hubieran sido diferentes. He'd be here now if the circumstances had been different. Fantastic. Es increíble. Después de menos de un mes casados, ella abandonó a su marido. It's unbelievable. After less than one month of marriage, she walked out on her husband. Great. Cuando se negaron a subirle el sueldo, él dimitió. When they refused to raise his salary, he walked out on his job. Fantastic. Si el edificio de oficinas no hubiera estado húmedo y sin amueblar, ellos no se habrían negado a comprarlo. If the office building hadn't been damp and unfurnished, they wouldn't have refused to buy it. Excellent. Alberto, este sitio es una posíliga. This place is such a pigsty. Good. This place is such a pigsty. Estas paredes están tan húmedas. These walls are so damp. Good. These walls are so damp. Él consiguió las últimas dos entradas que quedaban. He got the last two tickets that were left. Fantastic. ¿Te las arreglaste para hablar con los abogados? Did you manage to speak to the lawyers? Great. Antes echamos un vistazo al restaurante. Parece genial. We checked out the restaurant earlier. It looks great. Excellent, Alberto. En cuanto llegué, deseé no haber ido. El lugar era horrible y la gente aún peor. As soon as I arrived, I wished I'd never gone. The place was horrible and the people were even worse. Great. Si hubieras elegido la opción A, habrías ganado cinco mil dólares. If you picked option A, you'd have won five thousand dollars. You'd have won five thousand dollars, Alberto, but sadly you didn't. Okay, and that's why you're here now with me. Okay, <laughs> next example. Nunca he entendido por qué nunca han cambiado la impresora. I've never understood why they've never changed the printer. I've never understood why they've never changed the printer either. Timothy, okay? <laughs> en cuanto quieres imprimir más de 10 páginas a la vez, el maldito cacharro se atasca. As soon as you want to print out more than 10 pages at the same time, the blinking thing jams. The blinking thing jams. Esta es la primera vez que comemos berberechos. This is the first time we've ever eaten cockles. And the last example. Pero es la segunda vez que pedimos marisco. But it's the second time we've ordered shellfish. Good, but it's the second time we've ordered shellfish. Great work. Si te ha gustado, no dudes en suscribirte al canal de YouTube y seguirnos en Facebook y redes sociales. Hasta el próximo vídeo.